tell us about your lineup? Um, Sabarin goes in. Obviously, Parker Kelly was reassigned. Um, just you know, play more minutes down there for those guys. Um, and uh, Forsberg will go in net. Murr's on IR, um, but he'll come on the trip with us. Things look good. That uh, hopefully he'll be back in a week. Right. Did you say Matt will come on the trip? With yes, he will. And it, it looks like uh, things are progressing. So uh, we're hopeful he'll uh, he'll get back on the road trip. Ambrose come with you guys as well. Yeah, he's going to fly in uh, today, I believe. Uh, he'll practice with us tomorrow. Um, or sorry, it's an off it's an off day, but he'll he'll be at the rink tomorrow. Then he'll practice with us Wednesday, um, and then on our way to uh, Dallas. You just as far as Gambrell goes, you just need some depth, right, TJ? Yeah, for sure. I mean, um, no excuses. Uh, but Pinto's out, White's out, um, you know, Bishop's out. So you know, in an organization, you look at you probably have ten centers. You know, you have five that you think could play in the NHL, and then you got five that can play in the American League, is what you think. And of those ten, you know, right now three are out, and three of what we thought would be our five. And obviously, Nick Paul playing centers helped us out big time. Um, and then Shawzi's come in and played well. So Gambrell coming in adds another center to that depth and helps us. Do you, do you know anything about him? Like yeah, I talked to uh, uh, Boogie there in uh, in San Jose about him. Uh, real high pace, um, you know. He's more of a defense-first uh, player. Obviously, we're going to try and get you know get a little more offense out of him. But he's a responsible player, and I think going on the road, especially, you want guys that you can put out there and can play in their own zone. Can uh, could could Pintle still go either way? Like, he still maybe need surgery, or, or maybe uh, uh, like maybe not. Or, like, Still waiting on word on that. Well, you? we're still waiting on official word, but it's real optimistic right now that we think that he'll be fine um, in a couple weeks um, or less. Um, but we're certainly not going to put him in danger's way if he if he if it looks like you know we could injure him any further, we certainly wouldn't play him. So um, there's no rush there. He's going to be a good player for us for a long time. So uh, we want him back. It's a huge hole for us, but at the same point, his development is a huge piece of this organization. And I assume with Murray that um, it's it's a neck more than anything. Then, if, if yeah, I think so. I mean, I I mean, I I mean, I'm not going to discuss the the you know the, the injuries too much, but uh, it looks like it, it could be that. Yeah, so that would make him be back quicker. What does your club take from that? You know, you got such a young team. What's kind of the learning lesson that comes out of that loss to the Rangers? Well, you just got to make simple plays at the end of games, um, and you know, like I said, it. it it's better to learn this now than it would be to be in a, like I said, when this group, you know, all comes together and we have all the pieces and everything's healthy and everyone's going, you know, um, you know, I was talking to uh, Sanford about <clears throat> um, that playoff series when there was a hand pass, I believe it was, it was San Jose in overtime and they lost the game. Um, and you could sit there and dwell on it and let it carry into the next game, but uh, you have to turn the page and go back and play. And that's what St. Louis did. And then they go on and win the Stanley cup. But if their coach comes in and, and you know, starts crying and moaning about you know a certain call or you know uh, we got the bad end of that, whatever the case may be. Your team's going to follow that lead, and there's no need, uh, there's no you know excuses in this game. No one, no one cares. At the end of the day, you got to get results, um, and we got to turn the page and go on. How does adding uh, Scott Sabrin to the lineup kind of change the dynamic of what's on the ice? Well, I don't know if they're officially the biggest team in the league. They're one of the biggest teams in the league, and they're big bodies, and they're and they're big guys have skill. Um, the ability to be physical but also score. Uh, Savvy's a, a, a bigger guy that can get on the four check and give us a little bit of uh, backbone. Obviously, we got to, you know uh, some bigger defensemen, Josh Brown and guys like that. But Savvy's going to be able to get on the four check and, and kind of do we hope what their forwards you know do to other teams. Just, just Ovechkin has been such a force early on. How do you kind of approach him? I guess. Well, I mean that's been a decade-long question. Uh, how do people shut this guy down? Um, obviously, there's no answer to that. <clears throat> he continues to score at a you know, violent pace. He's got five and five. Um, if someone had that answer, uh, they, you know, they'd be hired all over the league and they'd be the genius. So uh, you know, at the end of the day, we have to give him, try and limit his time and space, limit him on the power play. You know, that's where he really you know, can let her fly. So don't give him power play time. And when you do, you got to kill the penalties. And, and, and just no odd man rushes. You give him freebies, you know, you, you're you not going to win the hockey game. He's just too good. Is the problem with them that they kind of come in waves, you know? 
Well, yeah, they, you know, uh, Kuznetsov, him and Wilson are, are, you know, Kuznetsov skates as good as anyone. Then you got Ovi and Wilson are two of the bigger guys in the league. They're just heavy, heavy people with, with skill. So, um, you know, you're going to need more than one line checking them, you know, and more than 2D, um, you know, second half of the shift. It's going to have to be all hands on deck. You have to understand when you're out there against them, they're the best players. And, um, you know, an even shift against that line or, or, you know, some of their guys is a great shift. Adjustments to yeah, for sure. I mean, you know, I was in Toronto, <clears throat> you know, one game, uh, we had one thing, you know, and you shut them down and you think you got them, then the next game he gets a hat trick. So there, there's every team in the league has tried every different scenario. It, the key is, you know, you got to try and win the face off, get it down, and then you got to stop their first clear. And then, you know, you're down to 20, 30 seconds of them left on the power play. But if you don't win draws and you don't stop them on the entry, I mean, Every power play in the league is good. They're going to get chances. So that's where we really got to hone in is not letting them get set up. Once they get set up, you know, they're going to get some, some chances. Just limit them. Would you like to see him catch Gretzky? What's that? Would you like to see him catch Gretzky? Uh, I'm a huge Gretzky fan as a kid. Uh, you know, growing up, that's my era. But at the same point, it, it is something else to see and to live it. I mean, I played in a, a coached in a playoff series against this guy where it is amazing how he shoots the puck. I mean, um, you know, uh, biting he's healthy. I mean, I, I think, you know, it looks like he's going to, um, and, and deservedly so. I mean, he's, he's, I mean, he can look at goalies from distance. He can score by scoring dirty goals. I mean, he's, and, and with all the, the technology in today's game and all the, the, the video that goes with on how to shut him down, and yet he continues to keep doing it, really is amazing.